Ever wonder how to be your best you in relationships? Deep down, we all want to be genuinely liked, cared about and appreciated by those around us, right? But how do we achieve this? How do we become genuinely valued? Not merely for what are largely superficial traits or accomplishments, but sunlight which illuminates the core of us. Treat every relationship as an adventure in which you are the pioneer of your own soul. You want to uncover the hidden treasures within your soul and share them with others. To do this, you need to map a path leading to understanding, connection, and ultimately love. Today, I will guide you in discovering your true value in a relationship based on nine ancient Stoic philosophical lessons. Pay attention, because these aren't just empty pieces of advice you often hear. It's concentrated on giving you more resources to live in ways that had never crossed your mind. Prepare to go on a journey of unraveling the secrets about how you put together love life and relationships based on mutual respect and inner power. Now, let's get started. Lesson 1 Understanding Your True Worth So, how does Stoicism relate to understanding your value in relationships? Stoics believed in focusing on what we have power over. And guess what? Your self-value is entirely within your control. Don't be directed by the likes you receive on social media, or if someone is giving attention it has to do with how celebrate yourself. Picture this imagine you're a gemstone, not everyone recognizes the worth of a rare gem, right? Some might walk past without realizing its significance, but that doesn't diminish the gem's value. It remains precious, rare, and one of a kind. That's you. Your value doesn't decrease just because someone overlooks it. Let's be honest. We have all fallen and been told no, we are not good enough in this world where everyone is winning. But the truth is this from a stoic point of view. Your worth does not rely on external confirmation. It's connected to how you conduct yourself, your principles, your deeds. Are you compassionate? Are you truthful? Are you living in accordance with your values? Authentic value resides there. The Stoics believed in self-reflection. So pause for a moment to consider your qualities, not just the obvious ones, but the deeper aspects. What truly defines you? You'll find strength in that understanding. There are relationships that simply built on successfully finding your own wisdom, a sense of self-worth whether others see it or not. Please remember, knowing your value is not a one-time occurrence, it is an ongoing process and frequent practice. It is getting out of bed each morning and reminding yourself that you are enough without anyone else but because of who you are. That can translate into doing things that remind yourself of your own value, such as taking good care of yourself, engaging in activities that you enjoy or setting and reaching personal objectives. These are the things that affirm to your being what you already have, and they help solidify a strong self-worth free from exterior praise. Lesson 2. Present yourself with dignity. Now, before you get the image of a stoic being that unsmiling figural old person who lived eons ago, I shall clear your misconception. Stoicism is not emotional suppression or utter indifference. Instead, it means a grasp of what should consume your energy and what you can brush off. And guess what? The way you present yourself deserves your energy. So what would it look like if you stand up for yourself with a bit of dignity in relationships? We have all experienced putting on a show to impress someone, but it becomes so easy that we forget who put up the curtain. We unfollow and follow trends in overriding hope of acceptance. But, and here's the point are serene. Adult minds should address your self-respect is not based on how you dress or where all of those cool cats go. It's the way you talk, it is what you do, and how they see your intricative decisions. Picture yourself sitting in a high school classroom watching two students present. The first student is flashy, using big words and gesticulating wildly to wow the crowd, whereas the other student speaks just as fluidly without any of that show-why tone. What student would you most remember? Then, genuinely comfortable in his own skin to boot. This goes to show how crucial it is for anyone to carry oneself with grace. The Stoics, with their emphasis on self-discipline and virtue as the primary goals of life, taught that you should simply live virtuously if living honestly and decently is important to a man. How does this translate to dating in the present day? It's straightforward, be authentically yourself. If you love to spend hours between book pages, don't stop doing it. If you exist on this planet and have a true passion for something, let it rip. It is not about pretending to be someone else but being comfortable and confident with who you are knowing that your mere presence is worth. 
Last but not least, one crucial aspect is how well you treat yourself. The way you treat yourself tells others the level of respect and value they ought to give to you. By criticizing yourself, you are basically saying it is okay for others to do the same. But that is what you are when you respect yourself, whether or not others decide to agree with it, such as by putting your time, energy, and emotional well-being on the back burner while making a passive plea for good treatment. Just think of it like this, the wise words spoken by the Stoic philosopher Epictetus, it's not what happens to you, but how you react it is not all about your perspective or what you say, but it has to do with the way respond and emote in general different given scenarios. Are you reacting with desperation or dignity? Do you feel that it would be dishonest to follow a well-trodden path just so not stick out? Or are your pride and integrity wide reaching enough for all nature? This doesn't require perfection. We're all human with our flaws and awkward times. What matters is how you deal with those moments. Do the stresses make you come apart at your seams? Or does it cause you to come together and learn more of who God made receive kisses from heaven? Let us pause for a moment. How can we begin to show ourselves more dignity? It could involve setting clear boundaries or refusing things that don't match our values. It might also mean treating ourselves with more compassion and respect. When you view yourself as worthy of respect, others will begin to see it too. Lesson 3. The Art of Nonverbal Communication It might sound old-fashioned, or even dare I say this, harsh to hear at first, but just hang on a second. So it's not about being hard to talk to, it is totally about we respect us and knowing that we are so worth. And what? I ask you good sir or madam stoic. Stoicism teaches us how to control ourselves and stay strong but not in a strict or boring way. It's about understanding what really matters and not giving it away too easily. In a world where we want things right away and keep scrolling endlessly, stoicism feels like a breath of fresh air. Let's think about it. In relationships in any form, we tend to want to be close and generally feel almost a pressure or an urge at least. Of I like you this much, I might as well give my world, but stoics would suggest taking a step back. Why? Because when something is always available, it loses its specialness. It's just how humans are. If you're always there whenever someone needs you, always saying yes to everything, where's the excitement, the mystery, the anticipation? Let's talk about how to set boundaries gracefully, the stoic way. Firstly, it starts with your appearance. Dressing stylishly yet modestly isn't just about looks, it sends a message. It communicates, I respect myself. You're not concealing yourself, but you're also not revealing everything up front. It's about finding equilibrium, expressing that there's more to you than what you see. Another crucial aspect is managing your time and focus. In a hyper-connected world, being discerning about who receives your time is a meaningful choice. It's not about playing games, it's about affirming my time is precious, and I prioritize it thoughtfully. When you're with someone, be fully present and engaged. However, when you're not, it's okay to be unavailable, dedicating your energy to your own life, interests, and personal development. Stoicism also emphasizes emotional self-mastery. It doesn't advocate being cold or disconnected instead. It encourages maintaining a balanced perspective. This means not allowing minor things to deeply affect you. It's about preserving inner peace and composure. You don't freely give your emotional energy to everyone It's something that should be earned much like how you selectively allocate your time and attention. I'm not implying that you should become unfeeling or distant like a stoic statue. We are all human, and genuine connections are essential for a fulfilling life. However, there's something special about taking things at a steady pace, about forming connections that aren't solely based on immediate gratification. It's about creating meaningful relationships that have depth and endurance, something that goes beyond instant access and quick fixes. It's important to note that setting limits isn't about playing tricks or controlling situations. It's about respecting yourself and staying true to your principles. This is about being true to you and holding stockings of self-respect, showing yourself that you actually honor and demand respect, not only by words, but more importantly, actions. So here's to being a bit more selective, composed, and stoic in our relationship approach. It's about striking a balance between openness and discernment, between sharing and reserving a bit. And believe me, it greatly influences how others see and treat you. Cheers to valuing ourselves and embracing a touch of stoicism in today's dating scene. Lesson four, be ready to walk away. It is easier said than done. 
But in relationships, sometimes we have to know when it's time to walk away and that's okay. We get connected, grasping the hope that things will work out, love would subjugate. But the Stoics offer a different perspective. They remind us to stand up for our value, and they inform us when it is time to leave. Time obeys the wasted talent no more than it does a dead relationship. Think of yourself as an artist painting a masterpiece. Each brushstroke, each color, adds to the masterpiece. But sometimes you make a mistake. You cannot keep smoothing paint over it hoping that the bump will go away. Sometimes you just have to let go and start over. All of this can be applied to relationships. It is not your job to prove someone how valuable you are. If they do not see it, then let them be. You deserve someone who appreciates you without the constant reminders. Recall something, or someone you held on to even after realizing it was not the correct thing for you. Why did you stay? Was it fear of being alone? Was it hope that things would change? The Stoics tell us that real strength is in being willing to walk away or letting go of things that do not contribute to our own well-being. Another Stoic philosopher. Seneca said it is not that we have a short time to live, but don't waste our lives. Activation means. In terms of relationships, this equates to not spending your time on people whom do no appreciate anything in you. It means you care enough about your soul to walk away from things that don't. Serve it. Walking away is not about commitment phobia or free will. It has nothing to do with walking in and out of people's lives. You're putting your self-worth and well-being first. It is knowing that you are worthy of love and respect, and if they cannot give it to you, do not be ashamed of letting them go. Picture a garden. Sure, you sow seeds and nurture them so that they grow. You can tend it all you want, however. There are times when a plant will simply never grow, and so sometimes the kindest thing for yourself to do is remove the problem. For relationships, this is about releasing the wrong ones to make space for the right people. Realizing it on time that going away from a toxic relationship is not weakness but strength. It is a statement of self-worth. This is about having boundaries enough to say, no, this doesn't serve me. It is better to move on and find that one exceptional person who will make you happy than be stuck in a lame duck relationship. Consider this if they don't know your value then fuck them, you deserve to be treasured by someone who appreciates your magnificence. In fact, often the very path to this person is by letting go. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor advised, if it is not right, do not do it. If it is true, wrong, say. In relationships, it means being true to yourself. If it feels off, doesn't support your values and self-worth, walk away. This isn't about not wanting to feel the pain or hardship. It's simply putting you first. Leaving a toxic relationship is like you are dropping some heavy baggage. You feel light, you feel unattached, and then in turn free to move ahead. You have to make room for new possibilities and create space in your life for wider connections and that big L word love. So always keep in mind that walking away works for those who just realize it is time to leave, not quit. That, my friends, is about owning your worth and never settling for less than you deserve. It is about making room for someone that will value you and appreciate your worth just as you naturally are. Lesson 5. Embrace the power of silence. In our noisy, fast-paced world, we all too often lose sight of another force, the power of silence. But the Stoics understood its profound impact. They thought that silence is not a feeling upon which there are no sounds, but the status of inner peace and strength. But it is in this silence that we seek clarity, wisdom, and a greater self-knowledge of our inner soul because quietness makes it possible for us to listen not just of others, but also our own inner whisper. Only in this space will we be able to think about the things that really matter our actions, what meaningful life truly is. And in doing so, we make space to listen into what it is that our heart and soul really wants. Consider a time when, at the very least for just one moment in your life, you found yourself completely quiet, perfectly present. How did it feel? Did you notice things you hadn't before? Did you feel a deeper connection with yourself and those around you? This is the power of silence. Silence is a power in relationships. It allows us to hear our partner better, to hear their needs and desires. They are moments where we can connect at the deepest level. To become silent could also be a sign of respect respecting ourselves as well as our partner. We show that we are not afraid to stand still, be with the now and go all in across everything present in this moment. Epictetus was right. 
We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. This is the wisdom of reminding us all to listen more. Relationships should not revolve only around talking. We must go a step further to listen and understand one another. Furthermore, silence helps us to control our emotions. If we pause before answering, we feel emotions and things can mature in our minds so that the answers spring more thoughtful than directly reactionary. Now we are only able to draw in nothingness and conquer all conflicts with a sane state of mind. The Stoics believe that a wise man always finds the right answer within himself. One does not find it amidst the noise and chaos of the world, but nestled within quiet moments of reflection. Silence allows for this wisdom to find its way. That we're able to see things more clearly, understand our intrinsic worth and connect with other on deeper level. Before we continue on from this moment, I want you to smell your breath and touch the power of stillness. Give yourself permission to just be quiet, listen and contemplate. Because in that silence you will discover strength, as well as grace and peace a more profound type of belonging to yourself. That silence is where you will finally see your worth and the importance of deep relationship. Lesson 6 Practice Compassion and Kindness Kindness and compassion in relationships wisdom from the Stoics it is understanding it that everyone we meet have their own battles. Through compassion we find space for understanding and connection. That we hold the other person in regard when approaching our relationships and I think there is truth. It's about showing up and supporting, validating them even when things are shitty. Not in a way so that we take disrespect or mistreatment, but as to treat the other person with understanding and empathy. Ask yourself, whenever you wish to find fault with someone, what fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I am about to censure? Marcus Aurelius, this humble reminder of our shared humanity steers us towards fraternity and charity. In relationships, compassion involves patience and understanding. That is to listen, support and care unconditionally for the people we love. Just a safe space where both people grow and flourish. Recall a time when somebody was nice to you. How did it make you feel? Did it strengthen your bond with that person? The magic of compassion in relationships. Kindness is the engine around which we lay the track of trust and mutual respect that all relationships need. When we exhibit compassion, it not only uplifts others, but makes our own lives richer as well. Yes, it is a circle of positivity and goodwill. Please know that when you give an uplift, a kind word, or just listen to someone today, all goes towards creating a better understanding world of love. Forgiveness in addition to love, compassion would have us forgive. We are all human, no one is perfect, and we all fall down sometimes. Forgiving someone removes all the pain and anger from our hearts. We don't forgive or excuse cruelty, we just let go and release it to move forward unburdened. The Stoics, for instance, focused on controlling the controllable and submitting to what they could not control. Isness also applies to relationships understanding that you cannot control how others act or feel, but in return the only thing you can actually change is yourself. The more we choose compassion and kindness, the better our relationships will be with ourselves as well. More compassion practice less metaphors in the morning. Instead, with each interaction that we have let it be one of kindness and understanding which downplays the positive ripple effect. This is why by practicing this just a bit more often ourselves we not only strengthen our relationships, but also create a more caring and supportive world. Lesson 7 Embrace Impermanence Stoicism at its core accepting impermanence all in life is temporary and change happens to be the sole constant. So if we understand this, then embrace and love the now with all what you have. Impermanence as a reminder to cherish the time we spend with our loved ones in relationships. It acts as a reminder to enjoy the small things, be present and share love in all of its forms. When we accept that it is temporary, the natural response of appreciation and awe can finally arise in our relation to all things. Seneca, another Stoic philosopher said, you are living as if destined to live forever. Your own frailty never occurs to you you don't notice how much time has already passed, but squander it as though you had a full and overflowing supply. It is a beautiful reminder that reminds us to live in the moment and savor those people, or little moments which all add up. However, accepting the reality of impermanence does not automatically result in fear to lose our loved ones. Instead, it extorts us to honor our connections. Gratitude for the time we do have and maximum usage of that. See the relationships that will always remain dear to you. 
How will you show them your gratitude or love? How are you showing up in your conversations more frequently? Embracing impermanence only makes us relate better to our loved ones, in turn leading a life filled with love and gratitude. Every day, we need to remind ourselves the idea that if today was our last with someone else, how would you spend it? What would you say? How would you demonstrate your love and gratitude? Focusing on this perspective of life enables us not to sweat the small and ultimately inconsequential stuff as well inspire our daily lives. Accepting nothing is expected to last forever provides a poignant reminder, not only to let go of the past, but also for us not concern ourselves too greatly about what might happen in future. It grounds us in the now where love and fulfillment exist. If we accept that everything changes, then peace and contentment can be found here. So let's take the experience of death tonight and honor that this shit is fleeting. Soak in who we are, the people around us and our experiences. We consequently enables a more valued relationship with ourselves, our families and brings love, gratitude and purpose to life. Lesson 8 Live with Integrity Integrity goes a long way in Stoicism. It is living true to the values we purport ourselves as having even in more difficult times. Integrity in relationships is about being honest, dependable and true to ourselves. Integrity is what helps makes our relationships strong, built on trust and respect. So it just boils down to showing up as us with all our authentic selves and getting the same in return from who we chose to partner. And doing what we say actually means humbling ourselves by owning and honoring our behaviors. Marcus Aurelius, if it is not right, do not do. If it is not true, do agree. It is a principle that informs our interactions and decisions. It serves as a bracelet to assist us in truth, integrity and honor. Integrity in relationships is about being transparent towards what we really feel, need or want, and upholding those boundaries. It is the open, respectful communication that has proven effective, even when it was hard. That we stand for our principles and do not bend to the popular values of others. Living with integrity also means being reliable. It is doing what we say, maintaining our word and being reliable with those who care about us. It is about just showing up and being there, fully in the moment for what will follow next holding oneself accountable. Recall a specific incident when your partner displayed integrity in the relationship. How did it make you feel? Did it strengthen your trust and respect for that person? This is the power of integrity. It undergirds lasting, meaningful relationships. Think of it like this when we practice integrity. In turn, our relationships and lives also benefit positively. This is contagious and we cause others to act the same creating a community of honesty, respect, and trust. Practicing integrity adds to the well-being of our relationships as well, helping create a world that is more honest and reliable. Then let us be integrity-driven souls. Come on, honest and trustful to our principles, this is how we create true connections with others through trust, respect, and being authentic. Lesson 9. Practice Gratitude Practicing Gratitude and acknowledging those who help keep us employed can improve our relationships and quality of life. The Stoics knew gratitude was key to a well-lived life. The point of it all is to, at least sometimes, remind myself that there are at least little but still important ways in which I am often happy those should be highlights. What practicing gratitude does is turn our focus from everything we do not have to what actually exists. It makes us grateful for those in our lives and the time we are able to have with them. Gratefulness nurtures the behavior of appreciating all the relationships that we have and thanking every soul at our end. So did Epictetus when he proclaimed, he is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he is not, but rejoices for those which he had. This wisdom teaches us to see the good sides of our lives and relationships. Gratitude in relationships means we show our partner that they are valued. You have to notice the little things and praise them for their work helpfulness quietness or any other quality you admire in that person. Gratitude helps to maintain positivity and supportiveness in relationships. Recall a time during which someone thanked you. How did it make you feel? Did it strengthen your bond with that person? This is the power of gratitude. It enhances our connections and creates a foundation of love and appreciation. What about this? How can you show appreciation gratitude in your relationships? Simple things like thank you showing gratitude or verbalizing positives about your relationship when we appreciate, a wave of appreciation and love is created. Gratitude, 
and our relationships our grateful nature allows us to address even the biggest challenges in relationships. If we can concentrate on that, then when something makes life hard, it will be dealt with in a positive way. It serves as a reminder of what is positive in our relationships and urges us to cultivate and cherish our bonds. Well, then we should turn gratitude into a daily job. Let us appreciate the people we know and accentuate our connection to them. This is how we build our lifelong love and appreciation for positivity. Conclusion Embrace Stoic Principles for Meaningful Relationships Stoicism teaches it offers significant advice to build healthy relationships. If we are able to learn that value, present ourselves with dignity, use silence when spoken words fail us empathize, and be compassionate towards our loved ones accept the impermanence of life itself by sharing this moment in time together instead of thinking about what will happen later on. Reflect upon the question, what do I want my reputation amongst family members? Live a truthful way at work act with integrity through saving moments for thankfulness. The same applies with relationships. Stoicism isn't about being emotionless or detached. It is also about deriving inner strength, wisdom and balance in our relations measurably too. It is about self-worth and the way we value another, stemming from a place of dignity, not need. Well then, it is time we take these stoic ideals and use them in our love lives. Long live love, meaningful connections and true inner power. In this way, we not only improve our relationships but build a satisfying and balanced life. We must always remember that the path to purposeful relationships is an ongoing experience. It takes introspection, training and developing to become your best you. However, the teachings of Stoicism can also point us in how we should travel down these paths with grace, strength and love. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey where timeless wisdom intersects with our everyday lives. Let's keep discovering and evolving together. For more insights, I encourage you to watch one of the videos recommended on the screen. Until we meet again, the most important journey is the inward one. Keep in touch. Please comment and share. Subscribe to the channel for more. Your engagement helps us grow and continue to provide valuable insights. See you next time.